The first talk is uh, first study results with an experience with the Pentachem XL. The um, device which is the combination of a Scheinfluke device coupled with a measurement device of axial length is quite intriguing, it's quite interesting. Here the financial disclosure, we consult for Oculus, we worked with them on several studies which I show you today. Now, if you look at the uh, change in expectations of um, the patients we're doing today is when we look back some years ago, cataract surgery was basically taking axial lengths, anterior surface keratometry, doing the calculation, and that's it. But nowadays, we want everything. Patients want corrections for near, intermediate, and for distance, and therefore, the precision has to be improved because we need axial lengths. We need to look at anterior and posterior measurements. We come to this in a point. We need to look at anterior chamber depths, length thickness, and of course, the sophisticated devices, particularly we're talking today, can do all this. Let's look for a minute on the corneal power, different views on the same eye. This is a tangential map taking the anterior curvature. This is a sagittal map looking at more points. I'll show you that in a minute. And this is the total corneal refractive power. Just for your information, this takes into consideration the posterior corneal curvature. Now, if you compare very quickly sagittal and uh, tangential and sagittal maps, you can see that the tangential take a tangent at each point, produce a picture for our, for our evaluation, and here you can see the other part. Now, it's more intriguing to look at the total corneal refractive power, TCRP, because this map uses ray tracing to calculate the power. Parallel light is sent to the cornea, and the light beams are refracted according to the correct refractive index, 1.376, the slope of the surface and the exact location of the refraction. You can see here a map at this uh, picture. Um, here is an example from our clinic looking at a sagittal on the left side here, looking at the anterior, and then the total corneal refractive power. And this is a thickness map also actually uh, provided by the Pentacam measurement. If you look at the SIMK, which takes the anterior surface, we measured here two diopters of astigmatism. This would be the same as IOL Master, Lenstar, with other devices, and the total corner refractive power at this was 2.1, so the real difference between them was 0.1 diopters. Now, you will find others. This is uh, SIMK 0.1 diopter, and if you look at this map, total corner refractive power, you have a one diopter. So here's a differentiation. Here you need to look in, just as an example, because now you have incorporated the posterior cornea, and we know from many studies that this can add to the corneal component. This was a difference of 0.9 diopters. So we did some measurements. I just would like to show you a couple of our uh, studies we did, very in short. Measurement repeatability of SIMK and total corneal refractive power. We did a prospective case series. We published that in the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery, 40 patients, corneal astigmatism up to three diopters, and we used five devices with different measuring techniques, uh, which were then compared. Two, me two measurements of each device were taken, and I come directly into the outcome. The repeatability of magnitude and axial measurements. You see here the magnitude. On this slide, we looked at PCRI, we looked at two topographers, we looked at the Scheinfluke device. Scheinfluke device then at one, two, three, four, up to eight millimeters, and you can see this outcome here. And what we found is that basically the best measurement, the lower Correlation of repeatability means better repeatability. The Scheinfluke SIMK measured showed the highest repeatability in this study. For the total corner refractive power, repeatability was best in the 4 and 5 millimeter zone. And if you look here, the axis, the steep axis, if axis was also considered, we again found the same outcome. You see here the total measurement of Scheinfluke, which provided the best value. Comparing the variables in relevant to IOL calculations, this is a paper we recently published in AJO, uh, comparison of axial lengths, corneal curvature, and anterior chamber depth measurement of two recent introduced devices 
to a known biometry, that was actually the IL Master 500, 700, and the Pentacam AXL. Prospective case here, 79 with power calculation prior to the study. Three devices, as I just pointed out, and again, two measurements with each device. What we found here is basically a very good correlation between IOL Master 500 and versus the second. This is just repeatability for both devices. Again, 700 and AXL. We also found here a very good uh, correlation between them. Let me go back uh, of these devices. So the comparison of the two measurement with the same device uh, showed for all these devices actually good outcome. But more important, we measured the comparison between the 500 and the 700, which showed a good correlation in terms of R1, RT, which are the measurements of the cornea, axial lengths, and interior chamber depths. You can see the outcome of mean difference very tight uh, between 500 and 700, between 500 and AXL, again very tight, and between the IOL Master 700 and the AXL. No significant difference in axial length measurement between Pentacam AXL and the IOL 500, as well as 500, uh, IOL 700 was found. Furthermore, recently uh, introduced Pentacam software designed to also get past very dense cataracts, which is an important tool. So we got our information on these lenses, or let's say the cataractus lenses, also uh, possible with the Pentacam AXL. Very shortly, another factor which is the new AXL has provided at what was known in regards of flex and lens opacification. This is again a paper we published in the American Journal of Ophthalmology, Impact of Crystalline Lens Opacification of Effective Phaco Emulsification Time in Femtosecond Laser Sisters Cataract Surgery with Dr. Meyer, Fritz Hengerer, and myself. And the third uh, publication here, the effective power um, we used for FACO time with a very good correlation in terms of the staging which we could do with a Scheimfluke measurement. So what, other, what we did in this study is we did the Scheimfluke measurement, we correlated that to the thickness or the hardness of the lens and we could found that basically there is a correlation, the harder the lens, the more power we were using and second, we also found that with the femtosecond laser, we used less phaco energy uh, in these eyes. You can see here the summary again. Flex has a lower EPT effective phaco time than conventional cataract surgery, and EPT correlates positive with the preoperative lens opacification. I think when you look further into this issue, one day we might be able to maybe titrate taking the Scheimfluke measurement, taking our ultrasound parameters and say we don't need a lot of parameters or a lot of ultrasound. We basically can do phaco emulsification without ultrasound or another device without ultrasound. There are all kinds of opportunities with Scheimfluke technology and that is provided in the uh, Scheimfluke AXL because you have Scheimfluke as well as axial length measurements. We wanted to know whether also the pattern matters. With other words, we looked at FACO technology, at FEMTO technology. Again, we did a retrospective analysis. 75 eyes were fragmented with a pie pattern, and the lens opacity was measured preoperative via the Pentacam density zone. This is a software which is included here. I showed you the slide. 75 uh, eyes were matched based on the lens opacification, however, having been treated with a grid pattern. So with every small femtosecond laser spots uh, to fragment the, uh, the crystalline lens. The effective FACO time was compared between both groups. This paper has been recently accepted for publication in the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery. And what we found here is that uh, overall favorable results for the grid pattern in this paper the grid pattern showed actually a less effective FACO time. Uh, if you see here, this is in second, 4.27 versus 6.64. And there is zero FACO, which we used in this type of procedures. We found 37 without any FACO uh, power from 75 of these lenses compared with a pie pattern of one out of 75. So is there seems to be a favorable outcome if you change a, f a pattern with the femtosecond laser. Again, this is something what we can uh, research in the future and maybe use for uh, the advantage of our patients and for surgery. 
However, the lens opacification larger than 12%, pie pattern showed lower APT. This you see here, this further analysis. So in conclusion, in general, grid pattern is superior. However, in eyes with high lens opacification, pie pattern should be considered. And you see, taking out this, you actually can use different modalities for the femto technology, which goes further into this topic of less atraumatic surgery. Scheinfluke also important for evaluation corneal crosslinking. A final study, the efficacy of corneal crosslinking with the Dresden and the accelerated protocol for treatment of keratoconus was evaluated. You know there are two types of procedures for this type of crosslinking device. 58 eyes with manifest keratoconus was included, 29 treated with the Dresden protocol. Of each eye, we had at least two preoperative measurements as well as two postoperative measurements available not the case of existing publication at the moment, and the regression analysis of the D values, which is from the Balen Ambrosi display, Renato is with us today, was used for evaluation of the conus progression. Keratoconus progression screen has not been available yet so far. So both methods showed to be effective in halting progression for these eyes with keratoconus. You can see in the upper part the Dresden protocol and the accelerated protocol in this type of procedure. So in conclusion, Scheinfluke measurements show high repeatability when it comes to corneal evaluation. I showed you these measurements in terms of astigmatism. There is no significant difference between the AXL and the established biometers for measurement of axial length in the study we found. This was a combined uh, project between uh, Oculus and Zeiss. Lens opacity, uh, opacity showed, um, uh, should be measured preoperatively in patients under flex, another topic, phacoemulsification and femtosecond laser surgery. In order to choose the right pattern, I showed you the difference between harder cataracts, softer cataracts. And finally, Scheinfluke technology can be used to track effectively uh, the efficacy of corneal crosslinking in eyes with keratoconus. This paper is under investigation, and I think this also showed the potential of Scheinfluke technology uh, in the uh, modern procedures we have currently available. Thank you very much.